umbilical cord milking versus delayed cord clamping in infants 28 to 32 weeks, a randomized trial funded by the NIH. There are different cord management options, including immediate cord clamping, delayed cord clamping, where you wait 30 to 180 seconds, cord milking, where the cord is milked three to four times, or respiratory support provided before the cord is clamped. Umbilical cord milking is where you grasp the unclamped umbilical cord and push blood towards the infants three to four times. This allows blood to be infused to the infant and it takes less than 20 seconds. In the United States, up to 25% of infants who need resuscitation receive milking. However, studies comparing milking with delayed cord clamping are lacking. What are benefits and risks of cord milking? Studies have shown that cord milking results in larger placental transfusion and increased systemic blood flow. The PRIMO2 trial, which compared milking with delayed core clamping in 23 to 31 week gestation infant, however, reported an increased risk of severe IVH in 23 to 27 weeks, and therefore was stopped at 474 infants. There was no difference in 28 to 31 weeks gestation in regard to risk of severe IVH. As there was no risk or impact on severe IVH in infants born to 28 to 31 weeks gestation, the Data Safety Monitoring Board and the Institutional Review Boards allowed the PRIMA trial to continue in 28 to 32 weeks, which resulted in adding one week to the trial. Therefore, the objective of the trial was that in infants born between 28 and 32 weeks gestation, milking versus delayed core clamping would increase or decrease the rate of grade three and four IVH or death. This was a non-inferiority trial with a 1% non-inferiority margin. Preterm infants were recruited between June 2017 and September 2020 in 19 uh, centers with a planned enrollment of 500 per group. Milking was done four times and a break in between each milking of two seconds for a refill. Delayed core clamping was done for 60 seconds and during uh, delayed core clamping, gentle stimulation was provided. The inclusion criteria were pragmatic to include pregnant women less than 32 weeks gestation. Exclusion criteria were standard for trials in court management and the consent approach was either prenatal consent or waiver of consent. What did the study find? The trial enrolled 1,019 infants and for the primary outcome there were 7 or 1.4 percent with severe IVH or died in the milking group and the same 7 and 1.4 with severe IVH or died in the court milking group. In conclusion, this trial in 28 to 32 weeks gestation found no difference in rates of severe IVH or death, although the non priority margin of 1% could not be demonstrated. What does this study add? Court milking appears to be a safe and effective alternative to accomplish placental transfusion in clinical circumstances where deferred core clamping might be not possible. We would like to thank all participating sites, all participating infants and families and the NIH for funding the study.